Hello, everybody. My name is Hazem Kuda. I am an AI ML Specialist Solutions Architect here at AWS, and today we'll be talking about our studio on Amazon SageMaker AI. So we do have a couple of slides that we're going to run through, and then we'll close out the video with a demonstration of some key capabilities and functionalities that our studio offers. So first of all, uh, you know, what is our studio on Amazon SageMaker AI? So our studio is one of the three managed IDEs that SageMaker offers, which means that it complements Jupyter Lab as well as Code Editor, and it brings the same familiar user interface and user experience that our studio Workbench does, but just on top of Amazon SageMaker. And so what that means is that we are able to actually benefit from the underlying scalability and resilience that the AWS ecosystem offers us. A brief word on the licensing model for our studio. So there is some flexibility here. Uh, there is a capability to bring your own license, which means if you or your organization already own our studio licenses, those can actually be transferred in through AWS License Manager. And alternatively, if you do not own any licenses, you can actually procure net new licenses via the AWS Marketplace. So there is some flexibility here in terms of if you'd like to bring your own versus if you'd like to purchase net new. This next slide here is just showing us a screenshot uh, that the interface and experience of our studio on SageMaker uh, is very similar and familiar to Workbench. So we'll actually see this here during the demonstration momentarily. And on this next slide here, we're actually seeing that we can toggle between our studio as well as SageMaker Studio and benefit from tooling and functionality that SageMaker Studio offers us, such as SageMaker Pipelines, um, SageMaker Inference, and, and so on. And we'll see this during the demonstration now. So let's go ahead and jump over to the demonstration. I am on the landing page for SageMaker Studio now. And I'm going to go ahead and select on our studio and hit on launch application. So that's from my SageMaker domain. Um, I actually already have a couple of our studio sessions spun up here. Um, for today, let's go ahead and click on new session. I just wanted to show that there is a capability here to spin up multiple sessions. And the instance type drop down here, if we actually click on this, we'll see a list of compute instance types that we can use for our session. Um, it is possible to scale sessions up and down in terms of compute type, uh, depending on your use case. If you need something like a T3 medium all the way down the gamut, all those options are available for you. Another thing to mention is that this list can also be restricted to just a subset. So if you and your organization would like to cherry pick just a subset of these instance types to offer to your users, you can also do that as well. Um, for today, we'll just stick with a T3 medium and we'll click on images. So out of the box, um, you know, RStudio does offer four uh, or a couple of images, but there's also a capability and functionality for you to bring your own image. So if you have a use case where you need a custom image, uh, you can actually build that and then use that uh, on your RStudio session. Again, for today, we'll keep everything as default and we'll hit on start. And while the session is starting up, uh, I'm going to actually go ahead and click on one of the old sessions I had running for our demonstration here today. So as this session spins up, um, I actually have a GitHub repository that I've already cloned into our studio here. Uh, we will provide the link for that at the end of this video. But this repository is basically just showing some example capabilities of our studio on SageMaker. And what I actually have open here is the third module around SageMaker pipelines and deployment. So we'll step through this notebook, um, you know, cell by cell, and starting with our first cell here. So this is the fairly standard AI ML use case. So this is, uh, we'll start off with doing data prep, uh, so transformation, and then we'll do model training, and then we'll deploy that model to an inference endpoint, and then we'll actually run inference on that model. Um, and we'll facilitate all of this using uh, Amazon SageMaker pipelines. So this first cell here is set up in preparation. So we're actually going to be using the reticulate library, which gives us a window into Python from an R perspective. And that's important because we will be using the SageMaker SDK as well as the Boto3 SDK. In the next cell here, we'll actually go ahead and download the data set. So the data set here is the Abalone shell data set. So this is a fairly popular machine learning data set. And the purpose of this data set is actually to be able to create a model that will infer the age of an abalone shell based off some set of physical uh, measurements or characteristics. So we'll go ahead and download that data set and upload it into an S3 bucket. We'll set up this tibble here that we're actually going to use for validation here momentarily. And we'll actually go ahead now and run a SageMaker pipeline. 
So if I go ahead and execute these cells, we'll actually see the pipeline itself is being defined um, you know, in a separate R file here, so pipeline.r, and we're actually just using that and then creating a new pipeline. So this has started. Um, and again, this is actually using the SageMaker SDK. So this mypipeline.start um, will actually go ahead and start a pipeline. So let me go ahead and jump over to our studio, or excuse me, to SageMaker Studio and go over to pipelines. And we'll see this abalone pipeline using R. And we can actually see it looks like our execution from about 26 seconds ago is uh, underway. So if I go ahead and click into this pipeline, you know, this is a fairly standard uh, machine learning pipeline, starting with the first step of uh, data retrieval and processing through model training and then model evaluation. So in this pipeline, we are using the RMSE metric as a conditional to determine if uh, we should register or add a model to our registry or not. Um, this is a fairly simple pipeline. It does take about six to seven minutes to actually execute. So we won't wait for the entire pipeline on this demonstration video here today. Um, but if we jump back over here, we can actually see you know a previous execution that was successful all the way from the data processing step all the way through model registry. So at this point, we have actually created a pipeline to facilitate an ML use case from data processing all the way through uh, model registration. And at this point, we are actually now able to do, or ready to do rather, inference um, against that model after we deploy it to an endpoint. So if we jump back to our studio, and this cell right here, uh, we'll actually deploy the model to an inference endpoint. Um, this cell would take a couple of minutes to run. So I've actually already deployed this uh, just prior to this video. So we'll actually reuse another endpoint. But uh, again, this is available in that GitHub repository and this would actually um, set up, well, this would actually first fetch the model from the model registry. And then this cell right here would actually deploy that model using a single instance count of an ml.m5x large instance and deploy that to a inference endpoint. So if I go back to my SageMaker Studio domain, I scroll down to endpoints, we'll actually see, again, I already have an endpoint that's deployed, and that's because if we were to deploy a new one, it would take a few minutes. Uh, of course, you're able to do that uh, on your own, but for today, we'll actually just reuse this endpoint uh, from prior to this video. And if I go back to our studio, uh, this right here will allow me to do inference using that test uh, tibble that we created earlier. And we'll actually see here this output um, is the output for the inference of the abalone shell. Um, at the end of the notebook here, uh, as a best practice, always good to delete your endpoints once they are once you are complete experimenting with them, so that you do not incur any additional costs. So, in terms of our studio, um, we have walked through a notebook that demonstrates the creation of a SageMaker pipeline for model training all the way through model deployment and inference. And one other thing to mention here is that if I go back to my uh, list of sessions here, uh, you know, I did spin up, it looks like it actually already selected that session for me. So I did spin up a new session. So this is my RStudio Pro session three. Um, you'll see that everything here is blank because it is a new session. However, another thing to mention is that the file system is shared across all your sessions as well as uh, all your other managed IDEs. So that means that if you download files into here, you can use them in other sessions and vice versa and in, in other IDEs. So to demonstrate that capability, um, we can actually go to, for example, Jupyter Lab. So a different managed IDE, but for the same user on SageMaker. And I can say, for example, say new file, create a file called jupyter.txt. And at this point, we can go back to our studio and we can actually refresh this file explorer and we'll see our jupyter.txt here. It's available in this session. And of course, if we go back to our other session, it's also available here. So all this to kind of demonstrate that uh, the file system is shared across all the IDEs, which means if you would like to do some of your work inside of RStudio and some of your work inside Code Editor and some of your work inside Jupyter Lab or some combination of the three, that is also possible uh, through our studio on Amazon SageMaker. So going back to the slides here, reference points uh, or resource URLs to provide. So the RStudio on Amazon SageMaker AI workshop. So this is a GitHub repository that contains 
um, three different modules that show capability of RStudio on SageMaker. The module that we just walked through is the third module, which is the SageMaker pipeline uh, sort of deployment and inference. And then these bottom two links here are some documentation for RStudio. Um, the first one is an overview on RStudio, and the second one is uh, documentation about the licensing model for RStudio on SageMaker. And that takes us to the end of our demonstration for today. So just to recap, what we've seen everything so far is we talked about what RStudio is. It's one of the three managed IDEs for SageMaker. We went through a demonstration, clicking from our SageMaker domain into RStudio. We actually created a pipeline, viewed that pipeline, created a inference endpoint, and then tested that endpoint, and then also jumped between um, IDEs to demonstrate the shared uh, file system 